show do not reflect the view of the Bronx Wanderers, Vegas Video Network, and any and all companies affiliated. The show will contain strong <laughs> language and mental air. Eh, fuck it. <laughs> Hello, world, and welcome back to episode three of What the Cluck. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. <laughs> if you're back, you've consulted your doctor and have been approved for this experimental treatment. Yay! Today is also my first day back talking, and the hardest part was actually not being able to talk to myself. Had no idea I did that so much, which helps explain the schizophrenia, though, so glad I'm back. Okay, let's not waste any time. So many things going on in the world to discuss. First up, Mount Everest, a, a rich person's idea of a fun trip, has seen 11 people die this year, and that's apparently a lot. The deaths have not been attributed to blizzards or avalanches, but the fact there were too many climbers, and in particular, inexperienced climbers taking selfies, trying to summit the tallest, most dangerous peak in the world. People, if you wanna spend tens of thousands of dollars to wait in ridiculous long lines, just go to Disney World. There's a ride called Expedition Everest that I promise you will give you the same experience. Next up, Rocket Man, the musical biopic about Elton John made by Elton John for Elton John has been released and is receiving mostly good reviews. Aside from the poor timing of its release post Bohemian Rhapsody, the battle for who holds the title of Queen of Rock in the movies has been waged. I'm, of course, waiting for the final contestant in this gay feature film race to make my decision. Boy George. I hear a movie might be made about him called Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? Short answer, yes, George. Yes, we do. Back to Apple. Wow, in my monologue twice. Uh, just announced it's ending iTunes after 18 long years. Yes, instead of using iTunes, Apple wants users to use Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV to stream entertainment, which is not surprising considering Apple's business policy. Why charge people for one thing when you can charge them separately for three? Because you know, every Mac computer now has to have 30 different separately sold converters and connectors. Thanks, Apple. We really appreciate it. But let's not cry over iTunes. It's not like anyone used it for buying or searching for music. We all use it to convert our WAV files into MP3s and to burn CDs. What the hell am I going to use now, now that I think about it? I also thank God I no longer have to get asked for my Apple ID and password, because for real, no one remembers that damn password ever. If I had a nickel for every time I was asked to change my Apple ID password, I'd be retired and moving to Dominican Republic. Uh, yeah, well, that's actually an, an old picture of Dominican Republic. Do we, do we have a new picture of Dominican Republic? There we go, dead, dead guy on the beach. <laughs> Which is a great lead into my next story, the Dominican Republic, just don't go anymore. As you may have heard, all this month, more tourists have died in Dominican Republic vacation resorts than soldiers in Afghanistan. It's true, six Americans have died in, wait, wait it's, 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 more, it's more than six? We're past six. Shit, man. Well, I don't have a staff checking things for me, so let's just do this. We got another graphic? There we go, deaths so far and counting. Okay, cool. At least half are reported to have had an alcoholic beverage in their hotels prior to being found dead. And if you're thinking to yourself, wow, that sucks. This can't possibly get any worse. Just wait, it does. David Ortiz was recently shot in the back in Dominican Republic. A giant black Dominican famous ball player who's famous for swinging baseball bats apparently was not safe in Dominican Republic either. Yes, this story is unrelated to the other deaths because Ortiz was not found dead in a hotel, but was instead shot by two police officers, not making this up, ordered to kill him by a local drug lord, also not making this up, because Ortiz was thought to be sleeping with the drug lord's wife. Still can't believe this isn't made up. Thankfully, Ortiz is on the road to recovery, and Dominican Republic officials assure tourists and the world, DR is still safe. Yeah, and so is Detroit. Lastly, an issue I'd like to address that I feel is far more dangerous to the environment and humanity than global warming and climate change combined. Stupidity. That, that's, that's a fucked up graphic. We got a better graphic. It makes it look like I'm like the stupid one. There we go. That's like way better. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. 
Uh, yes, leave it to humans to not only destroy our world indirectly, but we might as well wage the battle on two fronts. I'm talking about the infamous ranch fire, which ignited last July and is said to have been the largest wildfire in California's state history. The world finally found out how it was started, and no, it wasn't from climate change, but by a rancher, Glenn Kyle, a.k.a. Turd Ferguson, who stumbled upon an underground wasp nest and wanted to plug the hole with the metal spike. He said he was allergic to stings. While hammering the stake into the ground, a spark, a little spark, is said to have ignited the fire. This is where the stupidity factor comes into play. Instead of calling 911 immediately, Mr. Kyle decided to throw an old trampoline and an old carpet on the fire. Because, of course, we all learned in grammar school, old rugs and junk in your backyard are the best way to suppress a fire. This gets even better. Once he saw his trampoline rug plan wasn't going his way, he unhooked his trailer and tried to put the fire out by kicking up dirt ahead of it with his four-wheeler. Moments later, he lost control of his four-wheeler, which rolled downhill and lodged between water tanks and a cut bank. It was at this point he realized he had nothing else to throw on the fire. Then he called 911. When confronted by authorities that the rancher started a fire that destroyed 150-plus homes, cost tens of millions of dollars to suppress, burned 410,000 acres of California wildlands, an area half the size of Rhode Island, and killed a firefighter who was struck by a falling tree. When confronted, he said, Mother Nature, you have no control. Good freaking Lord, man. And let's not forget about the fire that started in Arizona from a Border Patrol agent firing at a target intended to explode and reveal whether he's having a boy or girl with pink or blue powder. Apparently, a nice dinner reveal party is too lame for the parents of this current generation. Do we have the, the video clip of my brother's gender reveal? Let's, let's, let's watch that. Oh my God. Let's football to Nick, he'll naturally drop it. <laughs> I'm scared. Fumble it. Do it. Don't kick this at you. Spike it. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what people do now. Yeah. I love the part it was a football, and I basically said, just throw him the football, and he'll automatically drop it. So that was, that was cool. <laughs> Luckily, no one died in my brother's scenarios. But uh, yeah, only his pride was hurt, because he found out he was having a girl. Uh, the Arizona fire consumed 45,000 acres cost nearly $8 million in damages. That guy, Dennis Dickey, was found negligent, unlike Mr. Kyle, and was forced to pay $100,000 and $500 a month for the next 20 years. Stupidity, folks. That's our greatest enemy. Don't be stupid. All right, enough of this dumb shit. It's making my head hurt. Let's head over to the table and meet our guests, Michael Shapiro and Sam Novak. We'll be right back. How you guys doing? Yeah. All right, nice, good. Well, nice. thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for taking the time to come today. We have Sam Novak here. He's a writer and critic in town. He's got a great blog called Vegas Unfiltered. Friggin' awesome. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> we have Michael Shapiro here, founder of Reckless in Vegas and tons of shows in town. Amazing songwriter. 
and a best friend. Thanks for thanks for coming, man. Yeah, anytime. Man. Really appreciate it. So talking about California before, uh, one of the reasons I'll never live in California, it's like living in a matchbox, uh, apparently. Like, that place just goes the fuck up every other week. Uh, Michael, you lived in California, right? Where, where are you from, the, the Bay Area? Family's from the Bay Area, yeah. Bay Area. But I, but I moved to Vegas when I was one with my family. Oh, okay. So and, but I moved back to uh, the Bay Area in 2006, and I lived there until 2015. And the funny thing is, I bought a home in San Rafael, and within the first month of living in San Rafael, there was a huge fire across the valley See what I'm that seemed like it was going to just wipe out the whole the whole area. And nice. it, it was pretty scary. But, Apocalypse uh, California. Yeah, it was crazy. Cool. I mean, cool. Yeah. You dig it here more than there, or it's you know, some San Francisco Bay Area is a beautiful place to live. It is gorgeous. Uh, yeah, there. but I love Vegas. Vegas is in my roots. My family moved here in 1955. My grandfather. That's right. So you guys have been it's, around. It's rich. Yeah, rich in my blood, and uh, I love it here. Good man. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Good. What about you, Sam? Are you always from here? Or uh, no? no, I'm only here since uh, October. He's a newbie. Yeah. Wow, you're a noob. Yeah. But, you're more of a noob than me. But the funny thing is, I kind of moved here partially because of fires. No way. <laughs> Seriously, I was living in uh, Central Florida, and when I moved to uh, Fort Lauderdale area back in the early 90s, I wanted to be around the rain and the tropics and yeah. climate change. It started turning into droughts all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was living uh, south of Cocoa Beach, and like my whole neighborhood caught on fire, the whole entire town. Was on fire. I was you on lost my your roof. house. Well, I almost did. Uh, I almost did. Wow. My, my I'm, I'm on my roof with a garden hose, watching my neighbor's houses burn down like crazy, mm. and helicopters flying overhead with buckets of water dumping, <sighs> and then the uh, the power lines caught on fire, which means my well. Went That's dead. exciting. So I had to evacuate. Wow. So I decided I am going to move to the rainiest place I could find, which was Oregon. Oh, I lived there too. Yeah. What part? Portland. Uh, Portland and Vancouver, yeah, I was, Washington. Yeah, I, I moved here from Salem. Oh, yeah. Nice. And, and I got sick of the droughts in Oregon. There were droughts in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, the past five years have been like record drought. Record well, drought, apparently drought. Las Vegas now gets all the rain from across the country because before before I came out here, yeah. people told me, oh, it never rains, it never rains, yeah. you know, it never rains. <laughs> and since I come out here, it's rained 55 times already. Well, we're right. monsoon so, now, too, so you're going to get a lot of rain I mean, dude, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And don't forget the snow. And and, the, and it's snow. I mean, we had uh, three awesome snowfalls in two weeks. Awesome for you, it ruined my garden. It man. truly oh, is the oh, end of the world. On, so if you got them, yeah, light them. Yeah, yeah. I'm out there in my underwear. The end. All right, East Coast, man. Dude, man. And it's like scary times, dude. Like apocalypse type shit. It's like really no, nuts. no, no. It's a cycle. It's gonna pass. You think it's a cycle? I hope it does. I hope it does. Okay, Sam. So uh, you're a popular critic. Uh, you have a blog. <laughs> yeah. He is. Popular. He is popular. popular. He is popular. Yeah. And uh, the blog is called Vegas Unfiltered. You write amazing reviews of shows in town. Uh, thank God you gave Bronx Wanderers a good one. <laughs> but uh, let me read you a sentence from one of your past articles. Amazing because yours was good, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Thank God for that, man. I'd be <laughs> fucked if it wasn't. Mm. Uh, as it is now, Magic Mike Live is a misandristic mess, mm. an expensive and overblown bomb that's about as sexy as Menopause the Musical. Ooh. It ranks alongside the first phase of Chris Angel Believe as one of the most poorly conceived Vegas productions of the past decade. Shit, wow. I'm really glad I got a good review. Uh, yeah, please, please don't ever come to my show. Ever. <laughs> See, so my next question was going to be, did you ever review Michael yet? I think he, yeah. No, no, he's he's yeah. he's, he's my cross, crosshairs right yeah. now. Oh shit! Where no, did you but, dig that? Oh. Uh, well, every time you come out with an article, uh, I read it because I love your writing. I think you're a hilarious writer. Oh, I laugh every time I read it, and even when you when you give people good reviews, you you have a a good niche way of saying it and describing it. And I've actually seen a couple shows because of you. Really? Oh, I really have, Can man. That's why I wanted you on the show. Have you not gone to a show because of him, though? Uh, I haven't gone to Magic Mike Live. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure it's the review that's keeping I you away you, that. you and yeah. I I don't know if it's the review there. or the naked dudes that keep me away, but yeah, no. well. There are no naked dudes in that show. That's the problem with it. Oh, oh, that's see, it's okay. So I, I, I saw that review. And my wife is a choreographer and a dancer, and she went with her girlfriends, and she raved about the mm. show. She liked the show. She loved the show. Okay, dude, and if you have women in your life that like that show, worry. easy. It's my wife. Worry. No, 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 no. Got to worry, so dude. So let's. Can we talk about uh, what what anything like a, in a quick summary? What about the show? Other than what? what the yeah, I so I want to know. Like, so what it's, didn't it, flow and come together for you? Because it, the show. How can you fuck up naked dudes on a stage? Yeah. Well, for, first you don't get them naked. Well, what are they like? They go into their little their underwear, and that's as far as it goes. And pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. And, and and that's like at the at the time that I first saw it, it was about fifty something minutes before 
They stripped off their shirts. Oh, uh, they milked it too long. Well, you know, women like it. They like to go slow. Men mm. like it fast, so maybe we're not getting it. But but the yeah. theme of it is man hating. The theme is man hating. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's uh, it it really is down on men, and in this Me Too era, to turn it around and and make the opposite into entertainment really. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. us two fuckers. Yeah. We have feelings too. <laughs> we have feelings too. Yeah, that, no. that's what threw me about it is that it it sucked the fun out of girls going to a male review or gay guys mm. what was the response from the women that, that were there the people that were there did you watch the crowd of course oh right? absolutely so yeah. was it was there a vibe there or what it was kind of a scary vibe um because the the host is a woman mm-hmm. and she dominates the show mm-hmm. and she spends most of the time slamming men oh. um talking about how i'm the, used to it uh, well, <laughs> it's like in one ear out the Which other is why at this i point. said if you you know if 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 you have women that find that entertaining there's there might be something going on there because well, yeah that's so they're whapping us back in that show badly, that's okay badly. all right and okay. so you could understand if there are women that are going to those kind of shows that are, uh, are like venting or frustrated yes and 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 it has touched a certain chord but yeah. I don't know if that has a really good place in entertainment. I got you. What's your, what's your favorite uh, naked guy show besides Bronx Wanders? Um, <laughs> you're not naked. Um, thank God. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but you, you, you do a lot of. I have a, you know, you I, get, I, I don't on. do sexy. this button. I don't yeah, like doing this sexy. button. Like yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah like that. Yeah, yeah. Like that. It's becoming yeah. contagious, right? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I still right. don't have any chest here, and I'm 31 years old. You don't want that. Yeah? No, 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 no. Thank that God. Smooth is in. Yeah, smooth is in, baby. Is in. All right, I trim a little. It's all right, that's cool. Here we go. So I we're like all it. on the same did, page yeah. here. All um, right. As far as uh, favorites, um, I, I could probably split it down the middle with uh, Chippendales. They're the gold standard. You know, they're. You I can heard take that's your a mom. great show. It is. It, it, it's fun in a, in a good natured way. Mm. It, they're the kind of guys that you could take home to mom, so to speak. That's cool. And Aussie Heat. Oh, is, that's not Thunder Down Under. That's no, that's, yeah. that's a completely different show. A lot of people think that that's the same, but it's not. Cool. Um, it's kind of like the Renegade Upstart, and they are so in your face, in your mouth. In your mouth? Yeah, yeah. Huh. That should if be the friggin' tagline. <laughs> Not only are we in, in your, your face, but we're in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, it's, it's completely no holds barred. You can that's touch cool. and grab and twist and poke. And No, I know. Like ha- half, of them, yeah. half of them reached out to my girlfriend trying to get with her. So like, I uh-huh. totally respect them for that. I like the girl from the Thunder Down <laughs> no, no, no. I, I took my girlfriend yeah, at the time. Yeah. Oh, man, that's great. Uh, but seriously, I love reading your stuff, so uh, keep writing. And you should totally review Michael at some point. <laughs> uh, okay, so Rocket Man just recently came mm-hmm. out. And yeah. uh, I have to admit, uh, I, I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, but we have to remember Elton John is alive and Freddie Mercury isn't. So maybe if Freddie was alive, Bohemian Rhapsody could have been a, a whole lot gayer. Forgive my whatever. But yeah. so 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 you're a rock guy. Yeah. What did, what did you think Elton of it? Elton John fan, of course. Elton John fan? Um, Yellow Brick I, Road was like the first album that taught me how to play piano. I lo- well, I miss that because I can't play piano for crap. I play guitar, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I the takeaway for me, really, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was great. And, and the takeaway for me was, uh, you know, we have to pay attention that all that material excess out here isn't going to make us happy. That guy had everything, has everything. Mm-hmm. And he went down that path of destruction with it. And and that, that was a, a big message for me, an underlying message for it. So for me, I live my yeah, life by that. you were no strangers to that. Yeah, so did that. you not? Uh, did you get a take No, I, I, I love the storyline. I just wasn't a whole fan of the whole Mary Poppins scenes. Like Mar- the whole yeah. everybody breaks into dances oh. with umbrellas oh, it was and just a goes really? into random shit so like that. So that, that threw me off guard. I had like, no idea it was a musical. I didn't yeah. think it was going to be like Mary Poppins meets. You, you ever see that biopic of uh, Bobby Darren, Beyond the Sea? I've never when seen When he's that. like talking to himself as a kid and mm. the little kid is singing to yes, him. Yes, yes, and yes, then yes. the old guy's singing to the little. Okay, it's cute, you know, for Bobby Darren. I just, I didn't see it coming for Elton John, I guess. Is... I didn't hear anything about it being a musical. And it's a, it's a treatment that the director and the writers chose to yeah. do. And that's a, if you're not, if you're in a, if you love musicals, then you would have loved that aspect. Are you not a musical guy? Mm. Believe it or not, for me, like musicals is the one form of art that I hate the most. I agree. I hate it the it most. Didn't bother me that I just much. don't like how people sing like this, <laughs> and I don't like how they talk. And then they just randomly go to talking, and then it's we go to singing. Art. It's another and form then we just of do art, that, man. And I just I can't wrap my fucking head around and it. And musical man. people you don't love the fact that, 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 that it went against the grain. There was no sameness to it. You didn't see it coming, so that was a theatrical experience. Yeah, I, I, again, there were a lot of the aspects of the movie I dug, and there were just some that like I just like. So the mom just like the dad just looks at the screen and goes, 
I want love, but it's impossible. And I'm just like, what the <laughs> fuck am I watching right now, dude? Like, I don't want to see the dad sing I want love. Like, I want to... I have to agree. Right, I, I want that, love. That part yeah. went quickly. You know, I, the whole beginning, I'm just looking at, like, my girlfriend going, oh, my God, I hope this gets better. I okay. Saw, I thought that, too. Okay. Same thing. Yeah. But it okay, was great. Cool. I thought, overall, I loved the movie. Okay, cool. And I'm also seeing this uh, this theme with rock stars that in order for you to make it to that level, your parents have to suck. Mm. Like, really got to suck. And I feel like I'm never gonna make it there because <laughs> my uh, <laughs> my my parents are cool. Believe me, like they they hit me when they shoulda, like they totally did. And uh, like like for instance, uh, I remember this one time. It was Mother's Day, and I used to smoke. <laughs> I, yeah, man, that, that's <laughs> wasn't a belt for me. It's a lot bigger objects. Uh, it was Mother's Day, and I gave my mom a card, and in the card it said, "Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I quit smoking." And I smoked. I was a smoker. Yeah. You know, it sucked. And as she's reading the card, she's walking around her room upstairs. And the asshole that I am, I'm smoking a cigarette downstairs outside. Wow. She looks. She's like so happy. She looks out the window like, Fuck, my life's amazing. <laughs> and she just looks down and and sees me smoking. Yeah. And she comes outside. Yeah. She takes the card, rips it up, yeah. throws it in my face. And the next thing you know, all I did is I tasted purple. Yeah. Because she just cocked back and right hooked me like to well the deserved. Fucking job. Nice job, Carol. And Excellent. I was, really great. I was really like, great. I was like, whoa, my mom hit me because like I wasn't a kid. I was like 16 years old. Like yeah. she hit like a man. Ish. <laughs> you know. Like she totally hit. Me. Me. hashtag us too so um yeah so i feel like all these rock stars like they're really fucked up mommy daddy wise struggle how about you michael do your parents beat struggle, you struggle look at struggle brings out the best in everybody you it's know true. when you life's too good and it's all wonderful you're gonna you maybe write some great love songs great yay okay yeah uh but but i mean I, i've written the best songs when i was in the darkest place in my life mm -hmm. and when it comes to having parents that are you know dysfunctional let's say my parents were my, when i was born my mom was 18 my dad was 20. They're hippies from the Bay Area, dropping LSD and smoking pot. Did they know how to raise a kid? I don't think so. So neglect was part of that whole situation for me. But yeah, I got I got beat all the time. Yeah. Hit with broomsticks. My dad had a belt on it. It was all metal buckles. And he would get it out. You could hear it tingling down. He never hit me with it, but just the thought of that was enough, you know. But he did whack me around pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. That's cool. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Look at there's no. I don't have kids, so I can't say I'm gonna be a better parent. We're, we're gonna get we're gonna get to that later if, in the show. If but, you gave me a card telling me Happy Mother's, well, Happy Father's Day, I quit smoking, blah blah blah, for the and then I would I would beat me. the shit out I of you. I do not hold that against you, Mom. You had 100 percent the right to beat yes. the shit out of me. 100 percent, 100 percent the right, 100 percent the right to beat me. And you know what? That's why I love them though, because they beat the shit out of me when the time called for it. Today's parents. Yeah. It's the other way around. The kids almost beat up the parents. Well, Sam comes from a police background, right? Your, your yeah, family? my family's all law enforcement. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. How did they treat you when you were yeah. a kid? Yeah, how about you? Uh, did you mistakes. get beat up when you were a kid? Beaten? What Tank a nice cops. show. Like, what a nice show this is. Oh, my God. Come like, cry with yes. us. Come cry with us at what yes. the clock at 1 p.m. But there was respect because of that, right? Uh, well, th that only works if there's a reason to get the beatings. Oh, if it's just abuse, that's a whole different Yeah, animal. abuse is different. We're that. talking, did you deserve some shit oh, and no, get no, some? No, 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 no. Me? Yeah, oh, he was angel. such a good little oh, he was boy. Angel. I was. I was. He Everybody was loved little Sammy. Oh, yeah. that's Teacher's so cute. pet, Con every artist. grade. Nice. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I'm glad we all got beat. So that's really nice. <laughs> yeah. least, it made least, us the guys. At least, it made us right. what we are, that's man. Right. It makes no you. Regrets, it really. It yeah. really does make no you blame, stuff. you know. Really Thank does. you for giving me this in, this experience. It does move motivate you forward. Absolutely. It absolutely does. Yeah. It absolutely does. Parents hit your kids. Yes. <laughs> um, we turned out great. We turned out great. <laughs> 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 Debatable. Cheers. Yeah. Before Cheers we uh, before we continue. Uh, Michael, any shows coming up at Reckless in Vegas? Yeah, yeah, I got a big show July 13th at Aliante. Nice. Um, and that's uh, another benefit for St. Jude's Ranch for Children. I love that you do that, man. It I was, love that you partner with them for it your It was shows. a little hard on this one just because um, low ticket price, and but I did get sponsors. Um, Accurate Building Maintenance, is gonna, they, op they offered to pay th great. $3 per ticket. Um, uh, Jeffrey Roth is a surgeon in town. Uh, he's offered to play, pay three dollars per ticket. That's great, man. And Boyd stepped up. Boyd, Boyd Gaming. Gaming? They're going nice. to pay three dollars a ticket. So as of now, nine dollars a ticket will go to St. Jude's Ranch for Children. So so they're going to make more money than we are. You hustler, you. But good. That's a good thing. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm happy for you, man. Thing. Good. Yeah, we love. When it. is that again? July thirteenth. July thirteenth at all. July thirteenth. If you're in town, go check that show out. Michael's got a great show. If you haven't heard of him, uh, and people that are from across the country watching. 
Uh, he basically takes uh, old style 50 songs. I mean, I'm sure you can describe it better than I can. Yeah. Uh, but he takes like Luck Be a Lady, Dean Martin songs, Frank Sinatra songs, and makes them rock modern Green Day rock and kicking songs. So yeah. it's it's a really cool thing that he does. So uh, check that out. Look him up online, Reckless in Vegas. Really cool. It's a modern twist on vintage Vegas. I love it. So it's postmodern jukebox in reverse. Reverse. It's exactly. reverse, yeah. 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 yeah, it's postmodern jukebox with balls. We need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. minus the Come mastectomy. Come see it, Sam, but be nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I will, no, just be honest. Come see care. it and skin. rip him a new asshole. Yeah, do it. <laughs> rip do it because, wait a minute, you, you can't say that around me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Please don't rip me a new asshole. <laughs> I like my asshole. Mm, I'm not touching it. Oh, man. God. Shit. So, uh, so what was I going to say? So, you're also a farmer. You're a, you're a part-time <laughs> farmer. Amateur. Yeah, you're an amateur farmer. So, you have you have yeah. chickens. How many chickens, chickens do you have? We've got five chickens. Five chickens. Get three I to shit five, you not. He really does. <laughs> three to five eggs a day. It's great. Three to five eggs which, a day. You know, he has, he has two great. doggies. <laughs> two dogs, and we've we got a garden going. We're getting spinach and romaine and kale and tomatoes, seven different varieties of tomatoes, hot peppers, bell peppers, sweet peppers, um, did I say onions? Purple onions? Wow. Red onions? You're, you're vegetarian? No, no, no. I like, I like just meat. doing the growth. It's just I don't amazing. Get it, man? Like, when how you, do you wake up one day and go, I want to do this much you, more work? You a day. marry a woman from Oklahoma. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. yeah that explains it's that. It's not that much work. Oklahoma. Actually. It's really not. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, it. You know. It's, it's all irrigated, so it waters itself. And and the, when you when you eat the spinach from the garden compared to what you get even organic at Whole Foods or any grocery store. There's life in it. There's actually an exchange of life that happens. Yeah, there's ants, the there's bugs, there's like all great shit in it, man. Amazing. Well, you're gonna be at the house for a couple of weeks coming up here. I so. am. I, I watch his house when you he goes what? away. Yeah, I'm also part time farmer when Michael part-time goes farmer, away. Part time farmer, part time. Father to the boys, Melvin Harvey and Shappy I Shapiro. love his dogs, man. I fell in love with his dogs. I may need you for a backup pet setter. There, there you go. I'm, dude, I'm cool. I love How animals. Cats? Listen, as long as I can give them back, oh I'm a great, I'm a great animal father. Yeah. It's just uh, the 24 seven responsibility factor for me. How are is, you about uh, picking up poop? I'm That's really bad at it. <laughs> what I'm about really, throw up? I'm really, I'm you. horrible at it, dude. Yeah. Okay, so I got a story. I got <laughs> yeah, a fucking it. story. So I'm in this Still studio, right? right? Yeah. Michael's got like a whole studio. And I'm in my underwear. I'm like, you know, I'm kind of semi-naked making music in his studio. And the dogs come in, and, and a maid comes in. She's cleaning up the whole house. She goes, all right, Vin, I'm leaving. All right, all right, take take care. She leaves. Little did I know, she left the garage open. Oh, yeah. So the next thing you know, yeah. I don't see the dogs for like an hour. <laughs> la, 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 and Liz, la, la, la. Yeah, he's going to get really upset. I didn't tell him, him this for like I months. I know this. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, he's Liz came home, and she's like, where are the dogs? I go, what do you mean, where are the dogs? They're running around somewhere. She goes... Vin, they're not in the house. So I freak the fuck out. For hours, right? I run outside in my underwear in his neighborhood, <laughs> screaming his dog's names like, Shabby, ba 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 ba. There's your naked I Bronx see Wander. one dog right, just, right. I see one dog coming down the road like, do 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 do. Like, you know, like, holy fuck, <laughs> Melvin, get in here. And then Shappy, his other dog, is like in this yard sniffing all this stuff. So I go, Shappy, Eating. get in here, get in here, get in Eating here. Coyote, coyote Thank poo. God I got them in there. Little did I know the hour that they were out there, his dog was eating was all the fair. berries oh, in the fair. fucking garden. No, 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 no. So this dog, like <laughs> this is 10 minutes before he's getting home from a two-week trip. The maid cleaned the whole room. This dog dry heaves on the floor. Not dry. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I've been to a lot of college parties in my life, a lot of drugs in my life. I've seen a lot of vomit in my life. Yeah. This Not dog like this. topped every single Probably Lindsay Lohan like video I've ever seen <laughs> yeah. in my life, dude. Like, this was like a vomit pile the size of this table. And the smell, I, I vomited on the vomit. Yeah. He so, this was it. a scene. He's... He was coming home in 10 minutes. And there I am with 16 paper towel rolls, just like cleaning everything up, freaking That's where all the, the paper fuck towels out. Went. And I looked at Liz and go, I just, I don't know if I can do this full time. I don't know if I can ever have kids. Like, yeah. I don't know if I can have kids. Yeah. You know? Okay. It, if they ever, if you ever get big enough to get your own biography. This is movie, why you have cats, though. You don't have right, to deal right. with this. But I, I want this scene in the movie on, uh, of your life. Yeah, you want to. Uh, I, I want to see. Of him this. cleaning a throw up or yeah. vomiting on the throw up. I mean, starting oh, yeah. with a running. Scorsese's down the yeah. gonna direct it. <laughs> right. Either so, way, the boys love you, and when you come over, they're very excited to see. You. Shappy hugs you immediately. Oh, no, so. I love you, man. You guys are family. You know that. The last topic I wanted to talk about was uh, apparently a, a new article released by Live Science, aka Real News. Uh, shows the world's population, 7.7 billion, starting to actually slow 
it may actually grind to a halt in 2100. People just aren't having kids anymore. Mm. You're married. Yeah. You can have kids. We talk about it. We're we're not. It's not a no, but but it's definitely not a yeah. Yeah, we're we're a little. It ain't the fifties anymore, people. Yeah, there's a lot of fear around it. You know, uh, we'll see. She's got two years to figure it out. I'm coming up on fifty in two years, and that's the deadline. Wow. And I technically would that, be the but... godfather, so holy shit. So <laughs> oh, I didn't up know that. that. We're having kids for sure. He's up on that. All right. Yeah. Sam, you're famously gay. What's the deal with you and kids? No? Yeah? No? Yeah? Uh, no, right? Fuck I'm, that. I'm, I am a population control advocate. I'm oh. self-proclaimed. Um, I like that. So you're like Dexter. You kill people in your in your spare time. That's nice. <laughs> if I do, I don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. In your sleep. I, I better get a GPS thing on, on <laughs> I feel safer right already. No, no, no. Uh, I'm very much pro-adoption, mm, and I'm anti-artificial cool. uh, insemination. Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting that um, people can get really fired up about abortion, which they consider to be killing, but they're completely silent about... Killing kids at the border? Well... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got my conservative friends over there. Yeah. yeah. But but the fact that we can use science to force, artificially create more life on an overpopulated planet, yeah. everyone's on board with. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And whenever I bring that up, I get daggers galore. Yeah, no. I'm, uh, I'm, like, I'm, kind of, I'm like, you know, when somebody tells me, hey, we're going to have a gender reveal party or, you know, baby shower, I'm like... Congratulations. I hope the baby's healthy. Where's your baby license, bitch? <laughs> yeah, they should have a license for that. Yeah, you, you just you like, should. Yeah. If, you got, if you need a license to rent a car, car, you should have a license to have a kid. I, really I feel so. like you should. Yeah. And, and considering the fact that we've all been had the crap beaten out of us. Yeah. You know, there's, there, yeah. There, there are guidelines. We don't come with instruction manuals on how to be parents. Yeah. You don't. And anybody can have a kid. Yeah, anybody, anybody can have a kid. It's scary. It is pretty scary. I mean, I'm 31. Like, I'm I'm totally on the fence about it. Like, totally on the fence. What about it's Liz? cool because my brother just had a kid, so I can have a trial run. Like, yeah. you know, if like I screw up, like it give backsies. You know, like here it's yours. It's still different. I'm kidding, Aubrey. I love you. You're a great. <laughs> it, you're a it's great, great, great to be an uncle, or in my case, a yeah. gunkle. Yeah, a gunkle. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Come over, have some ice cream, go home. I'm tired. I love it. Go. Yeah, that's my thing too. Very cool. Well, you know, uh, that's all the time we have for today. What? You guys, I know it's a quick show. It's a quick show. Yeah. It's hard to keep people engaged for for an hour anymore. Like people you have checked attention. out. Should we keep going? Attention uh, span yeah. of gnats. I'm game. But I just uh, need a refill. <laughs> Michael Shapiro, thanks so much for coming. Thanks, thanks for always being a great friend. Oh, yeah, Reckless man. in Vegas, go check him out. Uh, amazing guy, amazing songwriter. He's got his own songs too. He's incredible. Thank you, Sam Novak. Great writer in town. Keep writing, man. Dude, keep writing because everybody writes and reads your stuff. Everybody writes your stuff. But he reads your stuff. I'm freelancing out. So I yeah. haven't had a scotch or a bourbon in two weeks because of this vocal rest. So I'm completely elsewhere. You sound great, man. But uh, thank you guys for chiming in. We'll be back on, I believe, July 1st. We'll be back. So uh, be kind and uh, take care of everybody. We love you. See you later. Be cool. Woo.